Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So in this video, we're gonna be having a look at the new string-based project in Crowdin. We're gonna do a bit of a demo, see how it works and see how it differs from your regular project. So let's get right into it. So if I just head over to crowdin.com, I've just signed in. I'm gonna click on create project. I'm just gonna give this one a name of testing strings. And the main thing you're gonna see here is a new option to click string-based projects. So let's click on this. There's a note here. This is gonna enable all the Crowdin API methods. It's gonna enable all these strings string-based configuration that you need. Before we continue, let's just talk a bit about what this means. So typically when you create a crowding project, it's all gonna revolve around source files. So if you can imagine yourself as a developer, you may have some source files for your translations. You're gonna upload those and they are the source of truth. So what this means is that all the translations, all the keys, etc., needs to initially come from the developer before it can then be translated by everyone else. With string-based projects, we're gonna move the focus away from the source files and we're gonna move them to the actual strings in Crowdin themselves. So what happens now is Crowdin becomes the source of truth. And the main advantage of this is that anyone with access to Crowdin can basically add, update the key. So think about your designers, your content writers, translators, even the developers can all contribute into this one source. String-based applications are particularly useful if you support multiple platforms. So if you imagine you've got uh, an application that needs to support web, iOS, uh, Android, desktop, all of these are going to have different file formats, different strings, and it doesn't quite make sense to pick one of them as the source. With string-based projects, of course, Crowdin is the source. So as long as you've got the strings in there, you can distribute into all the different file formats and you can just consume it as you would any other project. Great. So let's head back over to Crowdin.com to finish off the demo. So I'm just going to go down here. I'm just going to select a couple of languages. Let's just select... Uh, French and maybe Italian here, and I'm just gonna create the project. And immediately you can see that we are landing on a strings tab instead of the previous sources tab where you can see the kind of the, the directory structure and the source. This is all revolved around strings, so that's why we see that here. So you can add strings in all the usual ways. You can click here, add string, or you can go into upload. You can have your integrations or even upload a source file. So I've got a CSV here called translations.csv. I'm just gonna drag that in, it's just got a few translations. Let's just hit configure here. Now, this one just has two columns. I just have a few keys and a few source strings. So I'm just gonna tell it that this is gonna be the key column and this is gonna be the source string. Then I'm just gonna add my two columns for French and Italian, and I'm just gonna hit save and import. Next up, I'm just gonna hit upload. And there you go, the files uploaded successfully. So if I head back over to our strings, we're gonna see our three new strings here. So at this point, you would just go through the usual translation process. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to the dashboard. I don't have any translators, so I'm just gonna use AI to translate um, into both languages. So I'm gonna hit uh, pre-translation here, AI machine translation. I'm gonna select all the target languages and I'm just gonna continue on the main branch and I'm just gonna click on pre-translation via machine translations. I'm just gonna give that a few seconds to complete. And there we go, we can see that six translations were added in total. So if we open up one of these, we can hopefully see that there have actually been some translations added. There we go. So the final step here, of course, is consuming your translations. Now, you can consume this in the usual way that you would consume a standard project. You can use the CLI, the API. What I'm gonna do here, just to, to kind of give you a bit of a demo, is I'm just gonna click through um, into the UI and I'm just gonna show you the translations for both iOS and Android. So I'm just gonna head over to the download tab here. We can see these target file bundles. I'm just gonna add two new bundles. We'll call this one um, iOS. The branch is just gonna be the standard main branch. That's the only one we've created here. I'm gonna scroll down and I think this one is iOS. So I'm just gonna click iOS strings and in this case, you want to basically give a name to the actual files that's gonna be downloaded. Uh, I'm just gonna stick with the example here, which is the two letters code. And we're just gonna hit save. I'm just gonna add a second bundle. I'm gonna call this uh, Android. We're gonna go down again, main here, click Android and keep the two letters code and we're gonna hit save. Final step I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna download both of these and I'll just show you the results. So you can see here, these are the resulting files. We have one for English, one for French, and of course we have one for iOS on the left-hand side and one for Android on the right-hand side. And there you have it. That's been a quick overview of the new string-based projects. If you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comments below or feel free to get in touch. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.